Mr. Weiss advised me that in his judgment, his investigation had reached a stage at which he could, should continue his work as a special counsel, and he asked to be so appointed. Upon considering his request, as well as the extraordinary circumstances relating to this matter, I have concluded that it is in the public interest to appoint him. And that is the Fox News alert. Attorney General Garland appointing David Weiss as special counsel in the Hunter Biden investigation with an assurance that that move is in the public's best interest. But our next guest doesn't buy it, joining a chorus of Republicans who are deeply skeptical of Weiss's appointment. Here to explain 2024 GOP presidential candidate Vivek Ramaswamy. Vivek, it's great to see you this morning. Thank you for being with us. What is your reaction you. to David Weiss being appointed as special counsel? On the face of it, it would make sense and it's a good thing to have a special counsel appointed. The problem is that this is a total fig leaf. It is a distraction. This is the same individual, the same person who actually negotiated that plea deal that the judge rejected handily. This is also just a designation of a title for an administration that in the case of Hunter Biden has been repeatedly creating one deflection after another. I think the timing in comparison to the Donald Trump indictments are not an accident for how long that investigation had been ongoing. And so unfortunately, I just do see this as another maneuver to distract the public from the fact that we have two standards of justice. And this is just a retrospective maneuver to try to justify that. You know, Vivek, one of the reasons um, that I've been very intrigued by your campaign is you often say things that nobody else is talking about. And so, yes, uh, the, the two standards of justice is critically important um, to Americans who are watching us right now and, and across the country, but also the implications. This is more than just a family who's trying to make money. There are real policy uh, implications to this kind of extortion that potentially Zelensky, the Ukraine government, may have over Joe Biden and may be responsible for billions of dollars that we're sending over there. But more importantly, we're inching closer to nuclear war um, as, this war as this war continues. And as you say, nobody has given us a real explanation as to why this is in our interest. Exactly. And I think that Hunter Biden, it's worth remembering, this guy is not just some fringe corrupt son of a U.S. president. He has been a geopolitical disaster. Remember that an investigation into Hunter Biden, potentially in Ukraine, that was already the basis for the second impeachment of the 45th president of the United States. But now the very country whose state affiliated company was making a bribe to Hunter Biden, putting him on the board of a company where Hunter Biden had no business being on that board. That is the very country now receiving $200 billion in U.S. military and financial aid in the middle of a war, marching us closer, I worry, to nuclear war with Russia. This has real geopolitical implications. That is currently beyond the pale of any Republicans, even many Republicans, to ask out loud. But I think it is the heart of the question when the U.S. president is sending aid to a foreign country where his own family was part of a bribe from that same foreign country. If the same shoe fit the other foot and this had been uh. Republicans or anybody else in charge, we'd be asking the questions. We should be here, too. Vivek, you're running for president. That's our, that's our next topic. You're a candidate there in, at the Iowa State Fair to address voters. Next hour, um, you're going to participate in a uh, fair side chat with Iowa, Iowa Governor Reynolds. I want to keep it on this for just a second, though, because I think this is really important. You just addressed external implications of what's going on. But when you nail it down, the implications are... The current president, while vice president, may have traded away our interest in, on behalf of his family. And the current argument is that the Justice Department is somehow in on not holding him accountable. Say this doesn't go anywhere else. We have a presidential election. You become president. What can the next president do to restore faith in the Justice Department or even our political class? Most importantly, start telling the truth again. Uh. The government today treats the people of this country as though the people can't handle the truth. It's like Jack Nicholson and the few good men. You can't handle the truth. I stand for the idea that, you know what? We the people, we can handle the truth about the COVID origin, about what's exactly happening with our money in Ukraine, about exactly what's happening with these politicized investigations, government tech censorship, the Nashville shooter manifesto of the transgender shooter that yeah. hasn't been released. Whatever it is, tell the people the truth once again. The other thing I'm going to do is, and I know many people find this extreme, I think it is deeply practical. I will shut down the FBI. 
that institution has become so rotten and so politicized hmm. that we can take the small number of frontline agents and move them to the U.S. Marshals or the DEA. But when you have a corrupt bureaucracy that should not exist, we have to get in there and shut it down. That's what I'll do as the next president. Oh, wow. I'm... I'm with you on that, Vivek. I, I mean, I, we just covered a story on the FBI and, and the lies that they've been telling about how they've been surveilling Catholics in their churches. Um, this yes. is, it, it is a rogue agency, no question about no. it. The, the agency is the enforcement arm of a federal criminal code that most people can't even quantify. We have no idea how yeah. big it is. It, it, it literally, we don't know. Uh, which the extension arm of that I think, right. is the DOJ, and then the extension from the DOJ is the FBI. The great question for you will be, can you actually execute? You and I've had that conversation, and I think it's an honest question for you, Vivek, as a candidate for president. Can you execute uh, really that vision? Yes, I can, Will, and I think it takes a unique combination. On one hand, it has to be an outsider that comes from outside the swamp. I'm a CEO, not a politician. I understand how to get things done, and I'm not bought and paid for. I'm funding this campaign myself and with small dollar donors. On the other hand, it takes an outsider who also understands the law and the constitution of this country. Yeah. That stopped Trump when the advisors told him about the civil service protections. Those civil service protections do not apply to mass layoffs. That's what I'm bringing to Washington, D.C. That's a unique combination, and that's what I bring to the table. Well, you'll have that chance here in just a little bit to, to speak uh, on a platform. Good luck to you in your campaign. Thank you, and Thanks for coming on. Thanks for coming on, Vivek. Thank you. Okay. All right, coming Thank up, you. Senator Ron Johnson will join us live.